Okay, this is the exterior. And the structure faces south. So that's south. So that means that this is the east wall where the kitchen window is. And right here, that's one of your overflow drains. And that's leaking. You can see some little bit of rust inside of there. A little bit of rust inside of there. We've had some rusty water leaking through that before. That's your secondary drain line. Secondary for one of your evaporator coils for the cooling system. So your evaporator coils have had an issue here. And these bushes too close to the house. That should be cut back. All these vines too close to the structure should be cut back. This is a downdraft vent for a kitchen. It looks like it's seen better days. Coming along here, we got some bay windows, a little bit of trash. Now, this is for the patio grill. Patio grills are beyond the scope of this inspection, but this one, and that's a GFCI protective. This one right here, obviously, the cord's disconnected, and we got some kind of crazy, I've never seen this before, kind of crazy plastic tubing going to add gas to the, to the grill, which again is beyond the scope. Good home, this is a bud. Hello? Who's calling, please? So, anytime you have, you now this is stone, but the Marble Institute says that if, if your kitchen overhang is more than 10 inches, then it should have a corbel, some kind of a support beneath here. A little bit of separation right in here and here. A little bit of separation. This is the patio grill. Looks like this side's been used. This side not. And again, this is beyond the scope of the inspection. Got some new briquettes in here. But what we don't have is the igniter. The automatic igniter, by reading the instructions, the automatic igniter should be working, and it's not. I got gas at all of these. Still not sure where that plastic gas connection is coming from that we saw over there. So, I'm getting gas. Now, if you look up here, see those soot marks? It's grill. And on the rain gutter? So this grill, is that is that just discoloration? Is that just about everywhere? It looks like it's just about everywhere. I was trying to blame this on the grill. And it's still hard not to. You should just know that this grill is awfully close. This siding, this siding should have a trap, excuse me. A screed, but there should be a gap between the siding and the patio. We've got a little bit of movement here where the patio's moved out. This looks like it's an interior duty fan. The paddles, the paddles aren't that loose. Coming along here, storm doors are beyond the scope of this inspection. We'll look at them a little closer. This is the exterior. I'm not going to trip this GFCI until I can see what's in the garage. I just want to see if there's any power out here. And there is. This is the combustible air vent for the fireplace. That's a good thing. The fireplace has siding. We've got passive wind turbines. Dark, dark hue. Moving along, this right here, what we're seeing, right here, this stuff, right, it's called a parge coat, it's kind of like a cake frosting, it's decorative, um, you can't see behind that, there's voids behind that, 
termites could come up in the voids. There could be cracks in the foundation that are not visible. It's just called parge coating. Your electric receptacle outlet, excuse me, <laughs> your lawn sprinkler spray heads should not be closer to the structure than 12 inches. We'll find out more about that later. A tree shouldn't be closer than 20 feet, some say 25, to a slab foundation. The roots suck water from your foundation. The roots can expand and cause your foundation to move. The trees are going to cause you some grief. What we've got across here is pretty much in with, this, with these stones, but we've kind of created a level drainage situation right in here. And you see these ends like this. This tells us that it's a tension cable slab, post tension cable slab. There's several different kinds. Some of them have piers, several different, but we do know that it is of that variety. It is a post tension slab. These are called weep holes. These are good things. Homeownership 101, all roofs leak, all walls leak. We want them to shed water faster than they accept it. Coming along here. You see this crack right in here? It's called, a, it's called a, a shrinkage crack. Some people call them corner pops. Call it what you will. But the brick and the cement have different thermal dynamics. They heat and cool at different levels. Another thing to note is the brick you'll never be able to measure. It's the only part of your house that actually grows. The cement is continuously shrinking. There's supposed to be a flashing between the brick and the cement, but that plastic never goes to the corners. And you see this. Now, if it's in the span of a hand, I don't know whose hand, and it's going down this way, that's decorative. I mean, you might need it to support a brick or two, but that's not a foundation problem. That is not a foundation problem. We're still going to look at the foundation, but this isn't a problem. If it was over here, maybe. If it was over here and going that direction, maybe. But as it is, that's just your typical shrinkage crack, corner pop white. What I'm not noticing, I'm going to back up here a little bit, kind of double check my work, but I'm not noticing any soffit vents. No soffit vents. Are, there, are they hiding in there? Okay, they seem like they're, you got continuous soffit vents integrated inside the, the siding. Is that what's happening? Siding chimney chase with a cap, trees touching roof. This is a good place to look for this, as good as any. The sun's in my eyes, our eyes now, I guess. We'll come back to that. Get to know your neighbors. This is a clean out for the master bath. See the way this siding is all nice and tight. Tidy's not supposed to be siding, and this is vinyl. We've got metal and vinyl siding. The vinyl siding is not supposed to be tight like that. It's supposed to move the thermal contractions. So what happens is when it's so stiff like this, and you got a little bit of bent siding right there. When it's stiff like that, you got a little bit of broken siding right there. But when it's stiff like this, and we got what kind of electrical thing going on here? What is that? Just a some kind of a rod? Yeah, it looks like a tent stake under there. But this siding can buckle with thermal contraction. The south, this is the north wall, tall fence. But this siding can buckle with thermal contraction, maybe even crack, because it wasn't installed loose, it wasn't hung properly. All around here, inside the Satellites on the soffit right there. We got a little, you know, some open holes that should have been sealed. Got some rain gutters above grade as well, and we got some leaking gutter. So that gutter leaks when it's under pressure. I'm just not real keen on that soffit vents. I'll have a better story when we get into the attic. Let it speak to us.
Grading and drainage around here is, is okay till we come out the fence. It pretty much is it's all right. We got two condensing units. These condensing. Oh, this is the water heater, temperature pressure relief valve drain, and they're supposed to terminate between three and six inches from the ground. They're not supposed to be higher than six inches. Then we have two condensing units, and they're just about identical. They're sisters. So they were manufactured in 2007, they're 13 years old, they're both 3 tons, and they both have R22, R22. R22 is an obsolete refrigerant system. It's no longer manufactured, it's no longer imported, you can still buy it, it's still available, it's very expensive. It's very expensive, it's not very efficient, and, and um, just about any technician that comes out here to service these units are going to encourage you to update, rightfully so, encourage you to update. So that's what you're going to hear. Every technician comes out here and says, whoa, okay, you got that R22 stuff. So what we, you know, we need to be looking to see about updating this. So, and minimum fuse 30, 30, breakers are 30. We'll check that when we get to the electric meter, uh, electric service panel, 30 amps. Now this is okay when the system was built, uh, installed, but this foam, they, they don't use that anymore for these reasons, because it gets all cracked and compromised. Squirrels can chew on it, so, so that, that should have been, by today's standards, that should be rigid, that shouldn't be soft like that. These holes should be resealed right in there, coming in here. And the refrigerant caps are not anti-theft. Again, it was fine when the system was built. Refrigerant caps were not anti-theft. Then um, these control wires. Control wires are, are, are they're very susceptible. Very susceptible. This is probably the control wires for the lawn sprinkler system. The electric service disconnects. We cannot open these up to see how they're wired because the, the covers are sealed. That being said, your electric service disconnect should not be behind the units. If this is installed currently and it wasn't, you'd also have an electric receptacle outlet out here so the technician could service these with power tools. We got a little bit of right here, this refrigerant thing. This is on the north side of the garage, uh, south. West. This is all the west side of the house. Excuse me. We're on the west side of the house. That's south. We got some cracks on the west side of the garage. All these are on the west side of the garage. Like a power to the home is below grade. The box has been sealed. The grounding rod. Those grounding rods are supposed to be completely buried, so you shouldn't have a grounding rod sticking up like that. Coming all along. Right there's above grade. Obviously, it's leaking. Your carriage lamp is missing its top, and then what has been it has been sealed. Look at that. Huh. Okay. Metal overhead door over your garage door. You're supposed to have weep holes. It'd be better if you had flashing too. That's your lintel. It'd be better if you had flashing, but there are no weep holes over the garage fenestration. And then when you have these little keystones or what, we cannot detail, I cannot make a positive determination that this lintel, this metal lintel, extends six inches on both sides. There's a little bit of cracking right up in there. It might. I'm not saying it doesn't. Paving stones laid out like this, not dimensional. They could be trip, trip hazards. And trees too close again. Now we're coming over here. I imagine this is, and I'll peek in. This is the office study. And uh, around the office study windows, we've got, we got some cracking around these eyebrows. The semicircular transom lot lights. We've got, we've got some cracking. This is the water pressure to the home. 
we're getting almost 80 psi, almost 80. We're looking for 40, between 40 and 80, and so that's fine. And of course, we got a, a leaky handle there. Got that going on as well. We got one clean out. I'm thinking there should be two around here. I think there should be a second one. I'm just not seeing it. Coming along again, too close. Another storm door. Another exterior receptacle. Did I trip that? <laughs> I better find it if I did. Yeah, I did. GFCI works. Coming out here. This is the parkway. This is the water meter. This is your dial. Is that baby dial in there, the little triangular thing? That's called. Well, actually, it's called a flow indicator, but most people call them cheater wheels or cheater paddles. If that's moving, that's very sensitive. If that's moving, that means water is moving into your home. You have a leak. And if it's a leak someplace that you can't see, you still have a leak. So if that's moving, go find your leak. A lot of leaks will be in your lawn sprinkler system. A lot of leaks will be commode flappers. Now, this is the check valve backflow prevention for the lawn sprinkler system. It's not supposed to be in the parkway. You don't really own the parkway. It's supposed to be on this side of the sidewalk. Now, it is what it is, and it is where it is. So, it's the way it was built. I get that. We do not have, and this was not required, we do not have a main shutoff valve going to the sprinkler system. We do have isolation valves, one right here and one right here. Okay, they're buried, they're old, they're rusty, they'll probably break if you use them. But there they are. Now this irrigation box should have been excavated. It should have three inches below these valves so you can wrap your hand around it and get it in there and service it. And then the box should be lined with gravel. Basically the same thing's going on with the meter. I mean, it, it should be excavated as well. I guess it is line with gravel. One thing I'm not noticing, I'm not noticing the second drain line, the second clean out, and I'm not noticing a main water service disconnect. Just not seeing that. We might have one inside. I might be able to find one and identify one, but a lot of times we have them out here in the yards. Sometimes we have them in the garage. Most of the time we have them out here. Remember the garage door? We didn't have one, uh, weep holes over the garage door. Garage car entry, we did not have them over the windows as well. We have them around the perimeter, most of the perimeter. So that's a weep hole, all walls leak. But we should have them over the, over the doors. Now, inside this hairy eyebrow semicircular transom light, those little lines inside of there. Those are called monthens, and when you see, and they're metal, and so they're, they're conductive. And glasses, you know, by its nature, it is an insulator. So any moisture that comes in these windows, or a lot of times when moisture gets in between the panes, it shows up on the monthens. So this, this window has been fogged. We got a little bit of movement, get some more movement right there. coming along. We're almost done, just bear with me. Remember the corner pops? Alright, this is what it looks like when they pop out. Again, that's holding up a brick. Is that nice? I don't think so. That's not a foundation problem. It's a cement problem. It's gonna be, it's gonna be called deficient in the foundation part of the report because it is part of the foundation, but it's not a quote-unquote foundation issue as I see it. This is your gas meter. Gas meter. These pots are not supposed to be closer to the ground than six inches. 
So the ground is too close to the bottom of this pot. Coming along, one thing we haven't seen. And with all the siding inserts, it's probably not a big deal. But we haven't seen any expansion control joints either. Coming along, coming along. So it's just a little bit high right over there. There's a big old bush next to the house. Oleander, actually. Kind of partial to them. I have a few around my own home. Okay, here we go. This is a better spot. I thought, I was, I thought you were through with me. You can just bear with me one more moment. Okay, this is called a cornice. This is called a fascia. And between the shingles and the fascia, that little bitty brown metal strip right there, that's called edge flashing. In this case, it's the rake edge flashing. Sometimes it's the drip edge flashing, but it's edge flashing. You see how it's lapped right there? The manufacturer says it shouldn't be lapped any less than 10 inches. You'll probably never have an issue with that. I get that. It's going to be on just about every house you look at. I get that, too. But I do know that the manufacturer has different specifications for the installation. So, it's going to make the report. This siding's still, still tight. Back you up. The siding is still tight. It still wasn't hung right.